Christians that wound up in hell by Caramello Brennis. In 1982, I had an accident in which I died. As death came over me, I felt everything become dark, and I found myself walking through a dark tunnel, and there was some kind of being that was taking me. While we walked in this cold and dark tunnel, I began to hear horrific screams and moans, and an intense fear was growing inside of me. I knew that, although my body was already dead, I was somehow still alive in this place. I saw large snakes moving all around, and all the people there were crying out for water. Soon we arrived at an open plateau, and there were many chambers and divisions that I saw, and each contained different people inside. I began to cry out with terror, begging God for mercy. Lord, remember my life! Have mercy! Sheer terror was gripping my soul, and my whole life was passing before my eyes. As we approached some door, I shouted again, Have mercy on me, Lord! Have mercy on me! I beg you to help me! Help me, Lord! Suddenly, there was a silence, and I heard a voice say, Stop! The voice shook all of hell. And that thing that was taking me by the hand released me. I am not the god of adulterers. I am not the god of fornicators. I am not the god of liars. Why do you call me Lord if I'm not the god of those who boast? I felt like I was going to be destroyed. But as the moments passed, God's voice became softer. Come, and I will show you the things going on in this place that are waiting for all those who haven't been willing to follow my ways and have walked after the imaginations of their own hearts. We then went to a place where I saw a woman sitting on a rocking chair. There were still terrifying moans and screams coming from all over that place. Now at first, she seemed okay, but then her body transformed into a witch, and she screamed in agony, burning in flames. She begged for mercy, but the Lord said to me, The wages of sin is death, and those who arrive in this place will never get out again. The Lord showed me many disobedient people, many who were once part of a Christian church, and they were crying out and begging for mercy. But there was no mercy. Mercy could only be found while a person is still alive on earth. Once people are dead, mercy cannot be reached anymore. As it says, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 Jesus also showed me a place with some kind of boiling oil, and there were people suffering inside, burning in the flames and trying to get out. But demons would throw them back in. We walked until we came to a place with people that had once listened to the Word of God, but never wanted to repent. I even saw pastors, evangelists, believers, and missionaries and they were all there for different reasons. I saw one pastor who never believed in the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, healing, or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he was begging for mercy and just one more chance to tell the world that tongues were real, that the Holy Ghost is real, and that there's real freedom in the gospel. But it was too late for him. He could never get out. Even though he was once a pastor, his chance to repent was only possible on earth. I also saw a missionary in hell, and he was there because he asked for money to open a mission in Africa. But he kept half the money for himself, 
And now he just begs for mercy and another chance to return the money that wasn't his. When he saw that Jesus could not help him, he cursed Jesus. I saw people there that were once inside a church praising God. Now they only cry out for mercy for their unrepented sins. They lost their chance to repent after they died. I saw pastors there who robbed tithes and offerings from their churches. They also begged to undo all their bad works. But there was no more chance to repent. Those who die without Jesus Christ go to hell. And those who die with Jesus Christ go to heaven. And many people believe that dying is just the stopping of existence, which is called annihilationism. But after death, your real life begins, either in God's glory or in everlasting condemnation and shame. You are making that choice right now. And we must all carefully meditate on where we will spend eternity. Do you want to spend eternity in hell or in God's glory? It's your choice. We continued walking to another horrifying place where there were demons of all types, different shapes and forms and sizes. Some of them had just one arm and eye and one leg. And their faces were like half of a human, uh, but the rest was just empty. And I asked the Lord, Lord, what is this? And Jesus said, These are demons of destruction in the homes of all those who are lost. This is the demon that will destroy and destroy without rest day after day. The torment in that place is so terrible the souls always remember the things they did while on earth, just like in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man could remember that he had a father and five brothers. You remember all the things you did in your life, good or bad. You remember all your relatives. And this is part of the torment, because you so desperately don't want them to enter hell also. Today, there are many people that preach the gospel, warning those on earth to repent. The only one who can save you is Jesus, who is at the right hand of the Father, ready to save you. As it is written, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12 Trust in Jesus alone. I even saw children in hell. I witnessed a woman with two children who were yelling at their mother. Why? Why didn't you take us to Sunday school? Why didn't you allow us to go to church? They cursed her because she never allowed them to hear the gospel. Even today, I still feel the pain in my soul when I remember that there are even young children in hell. I saw some between the ages of 12 and 14 years old. And they also regret many of the things they did while on earth. And many Christians ignorantly say that children can never be lost because they're so young. But I tell you, if a child can distinguish between good and evil and they are not walking in the ways of the Lord, they can also arrive in that place of torment. In the Bible, it says, I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to the, what they had done, as recorded in the books. Revelations 20, 12. All persons that can comprehend between good and evil will have to stand before the Lord. And nothing is hidden from the eyes of the Lord. We continued walking until we came to a place that was similar to some type of stadium. And there were demons all around. And they were laughing at the lost souls. They were mocking them and tormenting those who were made in God's image. 
the demons would tear off parts of the people and hide them, making the people search all around for it. Demons were getting sadistic pleasure by inflicting pain. As it is written, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. John 10.10 10. The people there desperately thirst for water, but there is none. They regret even the day that they were born. But the worst feeling is for those who knew Jesus, but then walked away from him. If you walked away from Jesus and are no longer following his ways, today is the day to come back. Don't be ashamed of what your friends or anyone else may say. Remember what Jesus said about those who are ashamed of him. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Luke 9.26 It is time for you to run to the presence of God and to look for salvation. Don't look for a church that makes you feel good. Look for a church where the Spirit of the Lord moves and repent of all your sins. It is time for deep repentance. Time to cry out to the Lord and run to Jesus. If you have sins that you have not stopped, your soul is in danger because the Bible says that Jesus will come as a thief in the night. Are you ready or not? Sadly, we continued watching the demons torment the people. I saw one demon rip out a person's eye and hide it, and that person had to drag himself in pain to find it. The demons were getting pleasure from their cruelty. To some, they ripped off arms and legs. But to those who had once known the Lord, but died in their sins, their punishment was much worse. They had a double condemnation. Those who never knew God were also in torment. But there is more suffering for those who knew Jesus and then became backsliders. While I was there, I felt unspeakable terror and sheer panic in my soul. I had such compassion for all the souls that were crying out for mercy. And Jesus said, I will show you how many things are still waiting for lost souls. We passed another place that had many different burning cells. And inside the cells were souls. But all that was left of them was just charred gray bones. But they could still feel pain and they screamed out for mercy from Jesus as he walked by. I found out that these people were once in churches. Some even preached the word of God during their lifetime. Some cast out demons and spoke in tongues while on earth. But now, these Christians were down here because one day, they decided to turn away from the ways of God. I even saw the road to hell. The Lord said, Look at this wide street. And I saw a street where a multitude of believers were walking. And they were even carrying Bibles. I saw some praying, and others were singing praises. And I saw how the narrow road of God branched off to the right. But the Christians continued walking straight to hell. Jesus explained, They have a double life. They are living two lives, one in my house of prayer and the other in their own houses. I said, But Lord, these people are praising your name. Jesus replied, Yes, and even when they cry, shout, and say nice things about me or to me, their hearts are full of adultery, full of evil, full of lies, full of deception, full of hate, full of roots of bitterness, full of bad thoughts. 
And then I understood what scripture meant when it said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7.21 Many Christians have some hatred or bitterness in their heart towards their brothers, and many even skip church because of that brother. But when the pastor asks the church, How many of you love the Lord? They say, Amen! But the Bible says that those who hate their brothers are like murderers, and no murderer can come into the kingdom of heaven. Just as it is written, anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, You fool! will be in danger of the fire of hell. Matthew 5.22 These brothers will deeply regret that when the Lord returns. The Bible tells us, Do not hate your brother in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in his guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people. But love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19.17 It's so sad when those who serve the Lord don't make it into heaven. You need to seriously meditate on this and ask, Am I ready for the Lord? Am I really doing the will of God? Is my life pleasing to God? You still have time to turn your heart to God and escape hell. Some people don't care about where they're going. They only want to enjoy this life. But I tell you, spending time with Jesus, not some woman, that's enjoying life. Spending time in the Lord's house, not a bar, that's life. We need to ask God for mercy for those who are still walking on the road of death and sin. In hell, we saw many who thought they were living holy while on earth, but now they were just begging for mercy and another chance. My soul aches so much for them. We saw a woman who was acting like she was reading from the Bible, and she preached about John 3.16. She said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus said she was there because she could never forgive her husband. She never managed to forgive her husband. This woman had been shepherding an evangelical church for 35 years. But now, in hell, she's begging for one more chance to forgive her husband. The Bible warns us, settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Matthew 5, 25 And Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Matthew 5, 7 If you are someone who cries in the presence of the Lord, you are still under grace and mercy. But if you feel you cannot cry anymore, or pray anymore, if you have stopped your prayer life, you are in great danger. Forgiveness is something special, and that woman never forgave. After 35 years of hard work for God, she lost it all in the end. Meditate on this and make sure you forgive all. How do you want to spend eternity? My brother would often tell me, The day I die, I'll go to hell and I'll let the demons torment me. But thankfully, he has repented of this foolish belief. 
because the judgment of God has reached him. While recording this message, he is currently lying down, sick with AIDS. He begged God for a chance, and he has finally turned his heart to Jesus. He does not think the same way anymore, and he doesn't want to go to that place of torment. Thankfully, my brother has accepted Jesus as his Savior. But my brother was lucky. He knew he didn't have much time left. But most people don't know when they will die. Jesus and I continued walking until we came upon a group of people who called themselves Evangelical Christians. Jesus explained to me why they were in hell. In the neighborhood where they lived, there was a drunk man that became a Christian. One day his wife got severely ill, and he began to go door to door, seeking help to bring her to the hospital. When he got to the house of a Christian, he told them, My wife is very sick. I need you to lend me some money to take her to the hospital. But the Christian told him, Ah, that is what you say. No, we don't have any money here. When he went to another Christian's house, they also refused to help him. Eventually, the man's wife died. One of the Christians said, I sure taught that drunk a lesson. He just wanted money to get drunk. But he didn't fool me. I didn't give him a single penny. Now, in hell, they are in fire and torment and deeply regret their evil. These men were tied up with ropes and burning. Their skin was falling from their bodies, and there was no end to the torment. They remember all the evil that they had done. A proud Christian. Please listen to me carefully. I was also an evangelical Christian. I prayed for the sick, and God healed them. I prayed for the lame, and God raised them up. I cast out demons and spoke in new tongues. But I had a spirit of vain glory that made me see my pastor as spiritually smaller than me. I saw many miracles in my ministry, more than my pastor. But I began to think that it was me, that I was the one doing the miracles. In my vain glory, I thought that I was super gifted, someone special. I didn't understand that it was the mercy of God that was in my life. When I got to hell, God told me, I am not the God of people with vain glory. Many of us stand before the altar of God, full of pride and vain glory. Many who sing praises to God begin to be full of pride. Many of God's servants who preach the word and are used mightily by God begin to think that they are overly important. Many people who work in deliverance also get full of pride. I want to tell you that God sees all and he knows your heart. If you have vainglory, pride, or arrogance in your heart, if you see your brother or pastor with disdain, please repent of your sins quickly. It is much better to be humiliated before men than be humiliated in the presence of the Lord. I wish you could see this place like I did. I wish you could hear the cries of the damned, feel the terror that I did, and see their final judgment. Then you'd understand. We continued walking until we arrived at some kind of waiting room. We saw a demon that was shouting, and other demons were presenting themselves before him. Two of them were in the form of beautiful women. Their job was to destroy ministries and lead ministers into sin. Those who serve the Lord must be careful of Satan's traps. Satan wants to destroy your life. And he can use those people who are close to you, 
those people who do not walk close to Jesus, they can be instruments of Satan. Satan also has demons that are disguised as men. They go into churches and search for young ladies, and even married women, to lead them into sin, destroying marriages and lives. In hell, I also saw a man that blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. He was begging for mercy and shouting in pain. There were worms all over his face and body, and he tried to remove them, but more would always come. His pain was unbearable. This man was worried about his family members arriving in hell. If you truly love your family, preach the word of God to them, so that many may escape from hell. Christians need to remember that even though they can hide the truth from the pastors, deacons, elders, and the congregation, they cannot hide from the presence of the Lord, as it is written. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Psalms 139, verse 7. Lying to God. It might sound crazy, but many Christians wind up in hell because of lying. Christians often just nonchalantly lie in church and think nothing of it. The pastor may ask them a question and a member just lies to them. But we must remember that a simple lie is what caused God to kill Ananias and Sapphira while in church. From Acts 5 verse 3. Many Christians are in hell because they simply lied to the pastor. They didn't realize that they were lying to God. And the Bible warns us, no drunks, no adulterers, no fornicators, no liars shall inherit the kingdom of God. You must know that just because you claim to be a Christian, you can still be unclean before God if you keep sinning. I was personally being used by God, but still had vainglory in my heart. There is still time to repent and renew your heart and mind. If you are a lukewarm Christian, backsliding or living a double life, bow your head right now before God and beg for forgiveness. Be willing to turn away from evil deeds. And if you don't know Jesus, Pray now and ask Him for forgiveness. Ask Him into your heart. Accept Him as your Savior. Don't waste any more time. And don't be a Christian that winds up in hell. Almighty God loves you, and He wants you to know that if you ask Him to forgive you of all your sins, in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, He will forgive you. You will then enter into His kingdom. When you enter into His kingdom, you must live by reading and doing His word, not turning to the left nor to the right, but obeying and following all that He commands of you, and He promised that you shall inherit eternal life.